lots of earthquakes at Vesuvius. But what is concerning is a certain kind of earthquakes that normally don't show up there in recent times, thankfully, because if earthquakes have a certain frequency, they indicate that magma's on the move. And now there were three unusual quakes at Vesuvius. The new INGV bulletin has been released. And is this a cause of concern? And I tell you why. Mount Vesuvius is considered active and overdue for an eruption, according to many scientists. So far, they always thought it's in a state of being quiet. The last magma eruption happened in 1944 and scientists note that Vesuvius has a increase of seismicity over the last few decades and it's quite significant how it has increased. Also, inside the crater of Vesuvius, Vesuvius is a stratovolcano, there is fumarolic activity. We just don't see it that much when we look at this crater from the outside. But in the past seven days, there were 96 earthquakes happening at Vesuvius right at the crater and a few above magnitude 2 up to 2.3. And that's quite high for a sleeping volcano. And the problem is, we do have Campi Flegre rumbling and is Vesuvius doing something now? Because more than 6 million people are squeezed in between the supervolcano Campi Flegre and between Vesuvius. The recent bulletin that they have released is their analysis for the month of April. So they haven't even analyzed all these earthquakes that happened in May. But what was standing out in April already is that of the almost 70 earthquakes that were happening at the Vesuvius crater, at Mount Vesuvius, this massive monster, there were three unusual quakes detected. So they fell outside of the known usual earthquake pattern that is happening at Vesuvius. They were happening on April 21st, 2025, at a depth of approximately four to five kilometers. And what was outstanding with these earthquakes was their frequency. They had low frequencies between only three and four hertz. And you might wonder, "Ha, huh? we've never heard that. Frequency, what does that tell us? Well, I'll get into that because low frequency earthquakes are usually caused, and here it comes, by moving magmatic fluids. So low frequency earthquakes, the deeper they are, the more concerning they are, but overall low frequency earthquakes can be a sign that magma is moving beneath the surface of a volcano and these earthquakes are also known as long period or volcano tectonic earthquakes they're often associated with the movement of magma within a volcano is how they call it plumbing system plumbing system because there's pipes magma pipes, so to speak, that are trying to reach the surface. But they're also related with the activation of faults due to pressure changes that are resulting from magma moving. So if magma is on the move, it can increase pressure within the surrounding rock and that's leading to the creation of small earthquakes. And then the movement of magma and gases that is happening that causes rocks to resonate, producing low frequency seismic waves. And that's what has been measured. So low frequency earthquakes are not always precursors for an eruption, for an impending eruption, but they are often seen as precursors of volcanic activity, of course, including eruptions. And they are very closely monitored once detected by seismologists and volcanologists for signs 
in changes of volcanic behavior. We also see this in other areas. In Germany, for example, I've reported about this, the Lacher See volcano in Germany has experienced recurrent low frequency earthquakes. And that is suggesting that there's ongoing magmatic change going on. The Tengchong volcanic field in Tibet also deep. They're, they're very deep. The deep low frequency earthquakes have been observed and they think they're well correlated with crustal deformation due to magma changing in that magma reservoir. So there's changes in the magma reservoir. And Germany again. It has been rumbling in Germany and Austria. That's why I think it's interesting to mention that. The East Eifel volcanic field has recently shown signs of deep low frequency earthquakes, indicating that magma is moving beneath. So in this bulletin overall, they had 64 earthquakes in April and the strongest April 7 was magnitude 2.6 so also quite high. Most of the tremors were at shallow depth, not very deep, um, in the area of the Gran Cono and its crater at the Vesuvius area. So what about these low frequency earthquakes that they detected that were considered unusual? They think that the cause, at least that's what they published the day after they were detected that fluids what kind of fluids they just say fluids may have interacted with deep groundwater magmatic fluids but overall the official viewers or what they're telling us is yes these low frequency earthquakes are rare at vesuvius but it's not a cause of concern become they have occurred before and at the moment do not, they do not see them as a sign of change in the volcanic state. Huh. In the April bulletin, they're still saying that everything is consistent with the long-term trends at Vesuvius. No further unusual anomalies detected except these three low frequency earthquakes. They think still that the earthquakes underneath Vesuvius are being caused by shrinkage of the crater of the cone. Uh, so they think it's nothing to worry about. There's still a little bit of subsidence at the Gran Cono that is recorded, although I think it has stopped quite a bit. So why are there still increased earthquakes? The subsidence that was also seen in the coastal area seems also to have stopped. So that would not explain earthquakes. But on the other hand, it's also not like in Iceland that we can say now the trend has reversed and we see an, an increase, a land rise again. That also does not seem to be the case. So is Vesuvio starting to recharge or is it already recharging? The overall, what is communicated through the observatories is that they say there's no signs of Vesuvius recharging compared to Campi Flegre. I have just released a new study, guys, that will blow your mind. You really have to watch that video. They have found the weak spot, a spot where the, the rocks are so weak that magma could reach the surface. The video is in the end screen, by the way. So there's an interesting chart that Volcano Discovery has released, and it shows you the number of quakes per year at Vesuvius. And if you look at that chart from 1980 to right now, it has increased significantly. Now the chart's going down a little bit, but we're at a very, very high level. But yeah, the reason that is what's basically the elephant in the room. Is this because of the subsidence or is this because of recharging? I mean, it erupted in 1944 and wouldn't you think that the subsidence would be greater after that? It's hard to tell, guys. Um, again, 
There's a lot of scientists that say Vesuvius is due for another eruption. And if you watched my last video about Vesuvius, I have explained it a little bit in more detail um, why they're thinking this, because it's not that long ago that it has erupted. It was in 1944. So it is not clear that that eruption cycle has ended. Maybe we're still in it and don't need to wait for a new eruption cycle because volcanoes do not work according to our timelines. They have a different timeline. With eruption cycle, I mean, let's look at Iceland. It started to erupt like once a month, every two months. Now, maybe it Vesuvius erupts every X amount of years, we could still be in that cycle. So it remains interesting. And of course, I'll watch this guy for you. You should really check out the last Campi Flickri video. So check this out and I see you there. If you want to support the channel, check the links in the description. It's greatly appreciated. Thanks for everyone who's buying me coffees and supers and becoming um, a supporting member of this channel. New videos for the members will be released soon. Thank you guys. See you soon. Bye.